Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 805 of the Juice Box Podcast. Well, you would think that I would have learned after saying that the Pro Tip series was only going to be 10 episodes, and now it's like 25, you would think I would have learned not to say we're all done, like I did at the end of the Bold Beginning series. Because here we are, back with something that fits in the Bold Beginning series. Jenny Smith and I are going to talk today about how to treat illness ketones. Please remember while you're listening that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you're a U.S. resident who has type 1 diabetes or is the caregiver of someone with type 1, it would mean a lot to me and it would mean a lot to people living with diabetes if you took a short survey that's available at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. This survey helps move type 1 diabetes research forward, and it's something that you can do from the comfort of your home. It's also something that may open up other possibilities to you if you want them, and if you don't, doesn't matter. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. Fill out that survey. Help move research forward. This episode of the Juice Box podcast is sponsored by Touched by Type 1, a wonderful organization helping people with type 1 diabetes that you can learn more about on Instagram, Facebook, or at touchedbytype1.org. The podcast is also sponsored today by InPen from Medtronic Diabetes. Learn more at InPenToday.com. And last but not least, today's show is being sponsored by U.S. Med. USMed.com forward slash juice box or call 888-721-1514 to get your diabetes supplies the way we do from U.S. Med. You may remember a time when I told you we were all done with the Bull Beginning series. Yes. That was a lie. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did we lie or what did we not complete? I should say. We, right. It's not like we yeah. lied. But. It wasn't a purposeful. It was a, it was, we didn't know. So t- for today, I'd like to do a bold beginnings episode about how to deal with ketones. Mm. Uh, because as I'm standing here or sitting and Arden has now had diabetes since she was four and she's 18, I would admit I don't 100% know what I'm doing. Uh, especially around illness. Um, So I think we should probably try to help people out a little bit with that. Yes. And I think for clarity there too, I think you've had, you've always been very bold with insulin, right? And so I, I have a sense that despite Arden having higher blood sugars, you've attacked it with the knowledge of even if there are ketones there and you haven't tested for them, you're adding insulin that is probably what we would recommend adding in excess of correction mm-hmm. that's helping to clear the ketones. So I I think you've gotten away with it <laughs> for lack of a better way to explain. Yes. Um, because you're just like, I'm not going to deal with the high. I'm just going to bring the high down and this much didn't work. So let's add more. You don't really have a science to how you're doing the more. <laughs> and I and I do want to talk about that a little bit so that people have. Here's my last recollection of it. Arden had the flu when she was, well, we both had the flu when she was like, my God, four years old, maybe Aww. like really little. And she and I are in bed together. Just like, I mean, we were right. a mess, you know, and um, boy, that's when I learned how to use a lollipop to keep her blood sugar up because I was, I didn't know what to do. She wouldn't eat. Um, I think sports drinks helped a little bit, but it was a lollipop. I kept I mm-hmm. kept them around. I was like, here, suck on this. And that she could kind of get away with. It probably helped if she was nauseous, too, if she had, like, stomach piece of the flu. Like a little sweetness, maybe. It probably, yeah. Often sucking on things, if you're nauseous, can really help to calm oh, the, the nausea. The action of sucking? The sucking, yeah. In fact, I mean, they have, you know, in pregnancy, they've got all these fancy products, the preggy pops that they're called, like these, they're literally just sucker, right? <laughs> I mean, I got through actually the early part of my pregnancy is sucking on um, 
They're made by the ginger people. They're just like, they look like little um, cough drops, but they're a gram and a half of carb a piece. They taste like ginger. Ginger's really good for calming the stomach. Um, so stuff like that. Huh. It's probably the reason along with supplying the sugar to keep her blood sugar up. It helped to calm some of the nausea, maybe. She might not have told you what she was feeling like as a four-year-old, but- right. Well, you just messed up my um my internet searching now because I'm going to start getting ads for Preggy Pop because I didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I almost didn't believe <laughs> you that they existed. Uh, there are Preggy Pops, which are lollipops. There are also yes. Preggy Pop drops, I guess. Nausea They're kind of like a cough drop. Pregnant women. How about that? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there goes yes. my there goes my the ads I'm going to get served now. <laughs> <laughs> Google thinks I'm pregnant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that got off the we got off the track pretty quick there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what I remember from that time was is that back then Arden was peeing on a strip to uh, to see if she had ketones. We yes. We saw that she had ketones. Called the 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 sick line for her for her endo's office, and I mean the rest of it I can't remember. Was it one unit for? Like if her ketones were two, we were supposed to like put in a unit to bring her ketones to one. And is that right? Or what do what it am depends? I yeah. I mean, so you did you did learn an adjustment strategy based on like adjustment for insulin strategy to help to clear the ketones. Mm -hmm. And if your blood sugars are high, um, not only are you using the corrective insulin that either you're calculating or your pump is helping to you know calculate for you. But you also have to add on top of that, based on mild or moderate or even large ketones, an amount of extra insulin to clear the ketones. And that's dependent on how much some, some places recommend basing it on total daily insulin. Other places recommend looking at your basal dose that you take or that your pump provides. Okay. And then dependent on whether you have mild or moderate ketones, um, it's either a 5, 10, or 15% of that total daily basal that you calculate, and then you add that on to your corrective dose. Okay. So let's say, you know, let's say your blood sugar is high and your pump recommends two units for correcting that high. With ketones present, that correction is not going to bring the blood sugar down as effectively, but your ketones are not going to get cleared well. Mm -hmm. So we need to add on to that. And if we're saying mild ketones, let's say you need five to 10%. Let's say your total daily dose is of basal is 10 units a day, 10%, one extra unit. So you're going to add on to the two units of corrective insulin, the one unit to bring your ketones, ketones down. down along with address the high. So a couple of things here. First of all, what I realized now is that all that time ago, I thought they were telling me one unit for this number, but it turns out they may have been looking at other things about Arden's insulin usage that I didn't even know about. They could have been, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other thing I remember from that time was the abject horror because Arden's blood sugar was lower. It was like 90, and, <laughs> and she had ketones, and the woman is like... So give her insulin. Give her insulin. I was like, <laughs> listen, she can't eat and her blood sugar is 90 and a unit will like crush her because she was little. And she's like, no, it won't. And I'm like, what? She's like, it'll just clear the ketones. Mm -hmm. That's a leap of faith right there because it is. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? So, so you just kind of, and I, about I it, have but. to say that your, your clinical team then was a little bit more on the aggressive side of adjustment. Mm -hmm. Many people will go home with directions if they do get anything for ketone clearance, they'll go home with directions that unless the blood sugar is above this value, you have to get the blood sugar high in order to give the corrective dose and to clear the ketones with the adjusted ketone dose. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Many clinics will not tell you to just take a unit, even though your blood sugar is 90 and you're not eating anything. So it's a pretty progressive thinking clinic. I, there's Listen, I... The my, the problem is the reason I don't have more in, information about this is even though Arden is sick at the moment, um, we don't generally get sick in our house, right. and Arden either, and we don't get the kinds of illnesses that come with like nobody vomits in my house, right? Like you you know families are either vomiters or they're not, you know like we don't <laughs> we don't throw up, and so 
<laughs> I'm putting that That's on my funny. tombstone. <laughs> Here lies Scott. Never really yacked. <laughs> so, um, uh, but so we don't have the problem with, well, we can't keep something down. Like right. it's not fun to drink or eat when you're sick, but Arden can, she can power through it. Right. Sure. So I've never really been in that situation. And I do take a lot of, I do believe what you said that we're just very aggressive with insulin so that even if Arden's been in a situation where there are ketones, we might not even know about it because we're, we'd be bringing them down. Correct. There's a connection in there that I'm, oh, I know what it is. Um, you hear a lot of people online get told, it's a variation of what you just said. You just said, like, push the blood sugar up so that you can put in a bunch of insulin. Uh, and I've right. also heard people told, like, you know, bolus, but then drink, like, sports drinks at the same time. Correct. Right. And that's actually, I think if your blood sugar is low and you can take something in, especially kiddos, often Pedialyte will sit okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just sucking on a popsicle um, or like you did, a sucker can be okay. Sometimes if kids aren't willing to take anything, put some honey, you know, in their mouth. Okay. Um, it can get absorbed through the mouth tissue essentially. But why would you leave ketones where they are and drive your blood sugar up just to take some insulin. So another strategy is to use some carbs that can be taken in and not cover those. Okay. And then allow um, the ketone coverage alone without a bolus for any of the carbs that you've intake or you've taken in. What's the reason for that? The reason for that would be if your blood sugar is lower already Okay. And you're worried, you know, Arden's blood sugar was 90 and you're like, no, we we can't give her a unit of insulin. This makes no sense to me, right? Um, so had she been able to take something, you would have essentially let the carbs go in without covering those at a lower blood sugar value because with ketones present, you need insulin to clear that. So correct the blood sugar with carbs, bolus right. for the ketones. Correct. All right. Um, this is... This whole dance here is why a lot of people who are people who vomit, people, I can't believe I've, I've designated that there are people who vomit and don't, but anyway, you know what I mean, more <laughs> prone to it. Uh, they often have a prescription for like Zofran in the house. Right. Right. Yes. A lot of type ones do that. So yep. when nausea comes, you can treat the blood sugars, treat the ketones if they exist and have the safety of knowing that you can keep something in your stomach. And and yes. not that I guess, I mean, let's just go over it. If you bolus for something and you eat it, but then it comes back out before you've digested it, then you don't have the impact of the carbs. All you have is the active insulin. And that is the quick way to seizureville. Yeah. Correct. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's the big reason that with a stomach bug specifically where you are throwing up or potentially the opposite of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether it's coming out one way or another, you're really not also absorbing everything that you're even able to put in and because your you know digestive system is irritated. Yeah. And with that, we say take in the carbs that you can and wait until you know it's going to stay down before you bolus for it mm -hmm. and then reduce the bolus for the carbs you ate by about 50, maybe 60%. So some insulin's happening but not super aggressive. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So now we're talking about illness ketones. Um, yes. These do land people in the hospital all the time because then they can put you on a drip to keep your yep. blood sugar up and give you insulin at the same time. They can bypass your digestive system basically and get your ketones down. Um, right. Can you tell people a little bit about why you don't want your ketones to be high? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ketones... Ketones that are specific to illness and high blood sugar or ketones that are relative to um, lack of intake because you have a stomach bug. So we're talking about illness-based ketones. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about nutritional ketosis or those on a ketogenic diet. Right. Right. So ketones in general in, an, in a state where you're sick, um, it's like having waste in your body, right? If you know the ash that's kind of in a fireplace once you've burned mm -hmm. the logs, right? That's kind of what ends up happening when you have the not desired ketones in your body. It's like waste product from having your body break down um, pieces of your body, 
right? And so your body tries very hard to flush that out, um, which is the reason that we used to test ketones using urine ketone test strips, because your body will try to flush as much as possible out. Um, hydration thus is very important if you have ketones, whether they're mild or moderate or absolutely high, need hydration. I and mean, we're talking about like a water bottle an hour of hydration with ketones, like flush, 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 drink, drink, drink. Mm -hmm. Um, but so that's essentially the reason that ketones are present. Um, your body doesn't have enough insulin to clear the high blood sugar. And that often blood sugars over about 240 or 250. If they're left lingering high for hours on end, right. you're more likely, especially with an illness, to have ketones show up. Okay. And this is just from the CDC, but DKA develops when your body doesn't have enough insulin to allow blood sugar into your cells for the use as en for uh, use as energy. Instead, your liver breaks down fat for fuel, a process that produces acids called ketones. When too many ketones are produced too quickly, they can build up to dangerous levels in your body. Right. And DKA in an illness situation can come on fast and, yes. and it can be deadly. Like, Yes. Seriously. Yeah. And that's another big one with, uh, you know, another testing piece that they often look at. Um, if you do go in and um, especially DKA or electrolytes. Mm -hmm. um, and so with illnesses that are the vomiting kind of illness, so yeah. to speak, you may have a difficult time keeping in enough hydration and electrolytes then get very off, mm -hmm. um, which does not help in the scenario with ketones present so i believe that beyond uh her her initial diagnosis arden's only been in dk one time and i don't know if she was in it or not all i can tell you is that there was this one time we had a kinked cannula that we didn't know about in a changed pump in the evening so she went to bed and didn't get insulin and then right. woke up in the morning and was like she had a really high blood sugar and as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's odd. This is a long time ago. And I tested it, changed the pump, saw the kink, and I thought, ooh, oh, no, 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 this is bad. And, you know, so I said to her, she was old enough to have a decision to herself. I said, listen, if you can drink a lot of water right now. um, <laughs> Hold on a second, please. Yes. Are you defining a lot? I, How much water is a lot? <laughs> well, back then, I I told her two bottles. I said, if you can get mm -hmm. two bottles of water in, I think I can get your blood sugar down in the next couple of hours. And she did not feel well. I mean, she felt terrible. And she kind of was like, I can't do that. And I said, that's no problem. But if you can't, we have to go to the hospital. They're going to give you an IV and everything. And she just like, I wish you could have seen her. <laughs> She's like, like, give a, me the water it's bottle. It's like an action movie. She like grabbed the water bottle. She's like, and just pushed it in. And um, I, I, I remember saying to Kelly, like I put a timer on it. I was like, listen, if you know, in three hours from now, like I said, an hour from now, if we're not seeing movement, but if we see movement, then we'll go to two hours. And then after we get under a number, but I was making it up on the fly. I didn't know what I was like, you know what I mean? So you're actually, what you did was right in the time frame. I mean, you're talking about not illness based, but, but a, a pump failure, she really, not have insulin, yeah. right? right? She didn't have any insulin. So in that case, right. You did the right thing. We recommend checking or looking at blood sugar after testing for ketones. And if you don't have a way to test ketones, assume with a consistent high blood sugar that it's probably a pump site failure. Mm -hmm. um, change it out, take insulin to get it down, hydrate, check again. You know, I mean, now with continuous monitors, you have the ability to see where things are obviously going. But if you don't, really checking blood sugar is about every hour to two hours, checking ketones somewhere between, um, you know, that time frame, everybody, every two to four-ish hours, check ketones again. If they're coming down, great. Continue with the water. Correct as your pump recommends. You can correct um, and continue to check your ketones until they're, you know, down. So one of the more interesting conversations that I see online every year is around this. Somebody pops up into the private Facebook group. They're like, hey, my kid is sick and they have ketones. What do I do?
You're getting your diabetes supplies from somewhere, but is that a pleasant experience? Only you know. Here's what I can tell you. We've gotten, gotten, we've received Arden's diabetes supplies from a number of places. None of them have ever been as good as US Med. USmed.com forward slash juice box or call 888-721-1514 to get your free benefits check. And you would do that to be part of a company that has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, who accepts Medicare nationwide and over 800 insurances. They carry everything from insulin pumps and diabetes testing supplies to the latest CGMs like the Dexcom G6 and the Freestyle Libre 3. Ooh. And US Med always provides 90 days worth of supplies and fast and free shipping. Better service and better care is what you're going to get from US Med, a company that has served over 1 million people with diabetes since 1996. Number one rated distributor in Dexcom customer satisfaction surveys. Who's that? Oh, that's US Med. How about number one fastest growing tandem distributor? With a number one distributor for Omnipod Dash. US Med's where we get Omnipod supplies from. We also get Dexcom supplies from them. You can get your Libre stuff, your tandem stuff. Just head over now usmed.com forward slash juice box or call 888-721-1514. So you want the functionality or at least some of the functionality that is offered by an insulin pump, but you're not ready for an insulin pump or you just don't want one. In that case, you should really look into the InPen from Medtronic Diabetes. Head to InPenToday.com right now. You can kind of follow along with what I'm saying. The InPen is an insulin pen, but it's attached, connected, I should say, to an app on your phone that helps you with things like seeing your current level of glucose after pairing your CGM to the InPen app. Ooh, how about that? What about meal history, dosing history, an activity log where you can see a list of recent actions, including doses, meals, and glucose readings. You can make reports to share with yourself or your doctor. I guess you don't share things with yourself. You just look at them, but you get what I mean. And the app also has a dosing calculator and much more. You should head over and take a look at it right now. And if you happen to be ready to buy when you get there, it's possible that you may pay as little as $35 for the impen. Isn't that crazy? It, you know, uh, I should say that the offer is available to people with commercial insurance and terms and conditions apply, but as little as $35. Go check out their hands-on product training, online educational resources, and 24-hour technical support. All of this is at inpentoday.com. And there are links in the show notes of the podcast player you're listening in now, and links at juiceboxpodcast.com to InPen, to US Med, to Touch by Type 1, and all of the sponsors. When you click on... Ooh, I just hit something while I was talking. I apologize. When I'm talking with my hands right now. I don't usually do that. When you click on my links, you're supporting the production of the podcast and keeping it free for listeners. So if you want an impen, if you want to switch to US Med, do it, but use my links. And if you don't want to, I don't really care. Do what you want to do. But if you're doing my stuff, use the links. This all makes sense to you, right? Don't forget, there are also links to the other sponsors, Dexcom, Omnipod, Gvoke Hypopen, Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. Uh, wow. There are a lot of sponsors. I feel like I can't remember them all. If I haven't said your name yet, don't get don't don't get mad at me. No, I said them. Yeah, I got it. I mean, you know, take the uh, T1D Exchange survey. That link's there. Touch by Type One. We already talked about today. Just use my links, please. Thank you. Oh, geez, I'm all over the place. I have to say, InPen requires a prescription and settings from your healthcare provider. You must use proper settings and follow the instructions as directed, or you could experience high or low blood glucose levels. For more safety information, visit InPenToday.com. I almost forgot to do that, but then I remembered at the end. And they have ketones. What do I do? Somebody who has had a bad experience with it or is afraid right away says, go to the hospital. They don't even ask any right. questions. Like, go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Then other people come in and say, well, listen, like, are they able to keep food down? You know, can they drink a sports drink? You could give them insulin. Like, how high are the ketones? Are they right. are they large? Are they moderate? Are they small? Like, you know, you might be able to manage this on your own. It's a very, it's a very interesting conversation to watch happen because there is fear from people who have either been in DK because of this or have been in a situation where they can't keep down food, 
And then there's right. the other people on the other side who are like, I guess not yakkers and they're like, you know, they're like, Oh no, you can manage this as long as it's not too out of hand. If it's too big, you should go. And I always think like, what a horrible situation to be in. You really don't know what the right answer is. You know, you know, call the sick line for your thing. Some people call the sick line and nobody gets back to them for a while. And correct. Or they give them information that's, that's not specific to their individual need because yeah. the sick line really isn't i mean if it's within your healthcare network they could potentially look up your information and see what's there but they really don't know the day-to-day you know nuances of your management right. and how sensitive you are and whatnot um it's really just a an off the list of do this then do this and then do this and adjust based on what your calculated insulin dose should be. It right? also gets messy or <laughs> messy is the wrong word because it's going to be funny in a second because a lot of people have uh, urine ketone, urine ketone strips still. So they're like, why? Well, I mean, I get this, like it's a baby or like, you know, a kid or like, I don't want to be, it's, it's, that's why I don't know what you have in your house. Um, but we've had a blood ketone meter for a very long yes. time we in use, fact that's the only thing we recommend yeah i use the precision extra i've used it yes. forever they're not um they're not sponsors i've just had it forever it works great um and they're yeah. they're nice because the test strips come individually wrapped mm-hmm. so you don't have to open a whole bottle which is only then good for 90 days after you've opened it unlike the ketone um uh the urine ketone strips once that bottle's open, you might use 10 out of the bottle of 100 over a sick period of time or a day when you had a high blood sugar because of a pump site issue or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But then hopefully you don't have to use the rest of them in the next 90 days. But really then that that bottle's like done. Yeah, they're trash. Which is the, and, you know, you're in ketones also. They're old information, right? It's a couple of hours old comparative to real time being a, a blood value. Right. Of ketones. Yeah. Well, as soon as Arden got sick this week, like we got her set up in her room. And the first thing I said to Kelly was like, well, I'm going to check her ketones, get the meter out, make sure we have it, you know, um, yeah. have a baseline. Like right now she doesn't have any, that's good. But uh, I guess I want to talk a little bit about what we're really talking about here is meet the need, right? Like you mm-hmm. generally speaking, you have a need for insulin you have a different need for insulin during an illness. And by the way, not all illnesses hit people the same. So, you know, you could like Arden had ketones with the flu, but now more recently she has a sinus infection. She doesn't have ketones with her sinus infection. You know, the who's and why's of that are not important. Just that sometimes this might happen and sometimes it might not. Correct. In general, whether it's this ketone situation or not, you have have an increased need for insulin and you're not meeting it. That's mm-hmm. all. That's all it is. It's it, it's scary and it's different. And there's the piece about oh, what if I can't keep food down? Which I think ratchets is up ratchets up the fear about a million percent because I can still remember being scared giving her that insulin when she was like four. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think there's a there's a definition kind of to make between high blood sugar illness and ketones and. The main illness that really doesn't drive blood sugar up, in fact, you may run lower and your insulin needs may look like they go down on the base level of what you need. Mm -hmm. But if you have a stomach bug and you're running lower blood sugars, as we said before, you may check ketones and ketones may be present and they may be more mild. They may even get up to moderate because what you're doing is you're now not taking in any food, right? Your body has to derive energy from something. So you get this low level of ketones more from a starvation base. This isn't driven because of high blood sugars because your blood sugars aren't high. Right. It's driven because you're not really taking anything in. And so then it's sort of like the, the, the question, well, I've had a lot lower basal insulin needs. I'm not eating anything, but I have ketones and now I'm supposed to take insulin. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, and the other side of this too is that, like you you mentioned it earlier, just there are starvation ketones, yes. which you could also see if you were doing an ultra low carb diet, and these do not put you into DKA. So. They do not, not at all. <laughs> yeah. In fact, many people, if you even tested just just so that you figured out how to use the machine, like in a baseline setting, and you're not sick or anything, mm-hmm. I. 
check your ketones first thing in the morning. Yeah. Many people actually have a really mild, low, low level of ketones because overnight, your body's supposed to go into this sort of like fasting. It's not supposed to be digesting food until right. you eat at midnight the steak and fries and cheese sauce and whatever it is. Right? And we, You and I talked about this in episode 287. It's a pro tip called illness, injury, and surgery. And actually in episode oh. 288 is a defining diabetes about ketones. Cool. Um, I actually think it comes up also in a how we eat episode uh, with a person who was on the show, but you should go listen. You should understand the difference, but you know, keeping it to just yes. illness. Okay. So let's kind of like, let's go back over what we've talked about. So sure. kids sick with two options, two, two scenarios. Kids sick can keep food down. Kids sick or your adult sick, doesn't matter, um, can't keep food down. So if you can keep food down and you have ketones present, is there, I mean, you know me, I'm like just thinking like just use more insulin until it goes down. <laughs> but I mean, what do they True. do? Like call the doctor? So obviously calling your healthcare practitioner is really, it's an important first step um, based on what their recommendations. I would even say rather than a, you know, a PCP, you really should be calling your endocrine team mm -hmm. because they're the ones that could help to dictate, well, how much more insulin to clear the ketones. The baseline is typically, again, one of two formulas. If you want a more precise dosing rather than us ah, take two extra units because you got, you know, ketones present and I know I need more. So this must be more. Right. Um, but, you know, if you're using it, um, looking at your total daily dose of insulin and um, then you may need about 10 percent more than what you average total daily. Mm -hmm. If you have mild ketones, if you have moderate ketones, then about 15 percent more of what your total daily dose is. Other um, other practices go more based on just basal, and that then would say mild ketones. You would look at just what your basal rate is or what your basal dose is, and you would take 5% of that and add it on to your corrective dose if you also need corrective insulin at that time. Okay. And again, how often? I, that's a question when we're when I'm talking with the people I work with, um, you know, about, well, how much and how often can I give it? Really, it's about every two to four-ish hours is the kind of watch point, right, where you're checking ketones again about two hours later. Again, hydration, the extra insulin, um, you should be starting to see some difference. And this is where the benefit of using a blood ketone meter really does come in because mm -hmm. it gives you decimal values to ketones. So your starting ketone level, maybe it's moderate and maybe it's come down by, you know, 0.4 over the time period that you've been testing and adjusting and everything. That's a difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. You're making a dent in your ketones. They look like they're falling. So continue to do hydration, watch your blood sugars, watch the ketone levels um, with kind of a testing plan of about every two to four hours. Yeah, you can't stop paying attention to it because it comes on no. so quickly. Are there... Um, physical signs to look for when you should, like, is there anything physical that would make you think we're not winning this battle? Maybe the hospital is the right way to go. Well, if blood sugars are high enough and ketones are present, obviously somebody is going to be more thirsty. Mm -hmm. Definitely. There are also ketones often make people nauseous. Like that feeling that you said Arden had. Yeah. Ketones feel horrible. Okay. Um, so those symptoms now, again, in kids that are old enough to tell you how they're feeling or teens, or even you're the adult, you know, managing everything, um, there's a little bit more ability to tell how you're feeling, but little kids are, I think they're harder. And so they're the ones that a lot more watchful, honestly, I would say under the age of six, more testing, more watching, um, because, they may be the ones that end up needing to go in. Right. So. And you're and you're clearing these ketones with water if you're lucky enough to be able to drink it and with insulin. Those are the two ways you can clear it out of your system. Yeah. And I usually even say try to try to go off and on with water and then maybe an electrolyte beverage that does have carbs in it. Because mm -hmm. remember, getting in some carb and if your blood sugar is high and you're doing carbs, obviously you're doing 
correction insulin, you're doing the carb insulin, Mm -hmm. a base electrolyte drink, and you're doing the ketone. So you're doing kind of a three level of insulin there because just because your blood sugar is high, your body still needs some energy. In, in, In illness situations where people are still eating, but they seem insulin resistant, that's that can be fairly common during an illness. Yes. So Arden had it this week with this with this sinus infection. Every night after dinner until like two o'clock in the morning, I gave her, I mean, enough insulin to put down a pony. <laughs> you, you know, like, and it was we were barely holding her blood sugar at two hundred. And mm-hmm. you know, it, it it just it takes a lot of time and experience to be able to say, I'm going to use a significant amount of insulin more than I, than what would normally be needed here. And, right. you know, I don't even know how to tell you to get into that headspace. It just, it takes time. Like you have to do it over and over again. But there was a moment when I came in and I said, uh, I was like, I'm going to go get a syringe and we're going to just shoot like five or six units. And, you know, because this 200 is creeping, it's going to go 240 in five seconds. Like we're not ahead of it. Insulin's not touching you. Right. And, and I need to, my thought there was, it's interesting. I'm almost not as aggressive as I sound there. I just don't want it to skyrocket because right. I, I know I'm putting all this insulin into her. And at some point it might start working and put her in the wrong direction too. Correct. So I'm I'm being super aggressive. If I told you, I thought I might've used twice as much insulin. Like I had her, Probably. I had her basal doubled. I mean, okay. she, her basal was like at two units an hour. And we were bolusing, it felt like every 90 minutes Mm -hmm. just to hold it where it was. Like every time it tried to go up, I was like, no, 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 like more, you know? And we were up watching, what did we watch on Hulu? Oh, uh, Only Murderers in the Building. And we sat up, (laughs) we sat up while Arden was um, sick watching that for a couple of nights. And we just kept pushing. But the problem was, is that she, she hadn't lost her appetite and on top of everything else, was going for comfort food while she was sick. Right. So it wasn't just, it was the illness. Um, we were trying to hydrate her, but God knows how well that was going. She was drinking a lot, but then she's eating food that's more comfort food. And I mean, it was a show, Jenny. Like, it really well, was. <laughs> I think you bring actually a, an important point here in a sense mm-hmm. is that when you're talking about illness, most illnesses that are the chest cold, the sinus infection, an ear infection, um, even like a bad like tooth infection or mm-hmm. whatnot, those will drive your insulin needs up mm-hmm. because of the stress of the illness. And if you're not staying on top of that need to add more and by how much more, uh, mild mild cold, when you're still up and around, you just feel sniffy, you may need 10% more basal insulin. Mm-hmm. Whether it's injected insulin or in your pump, you may need to use temp basal increases or whatever, you know, system you're using to accommodate more. Yeah. You've got a nasty bug that is driving your blood sugars up and you're not adjusting your basal up 20, 30, 50%. I remember my insulin needs. I wasn't even on a pump in college. I had mono and I I could barely like drink like broth Mm -hmm. (laughs) and my blood sugars are high and my endo was like, you need to just increase the basal amount. I was amazed at how much my insulin needs went up just because I was so sick. So I think if you don't stay on top of that with an illness early on, you're more likely to get ketones because you, because you haven't brought the blood sugars down based on the illness stress. Right. Right. So you could almost have, because of the situation and such high blood sugars, you might have ketones that are just from high blood sugars that aren't specifically from illness. True. Yeah. And, yeah. I, you know, there's always, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go in a minute, but that's okay. Inevitably, I see someone online who's sick and they have a CGM. And I, everyone who has a CGM has ever seen this knows how frightening it looks. Like it, there's a ceiling to the CGM, like it only goes to like 400 or something right. like that. Right. It's flat. And then it just runs this dotted line across the top flat. And somebody posted recently, I've been sick for days and my blood sugar has been like this for days. And I'm like, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. And, you know, and and it, and it people are like saying, like, do this, do that. I just popped into the thread. I was like, use more insulin. Use more basal insulin. Inject it. Treat, like, bring it down. Like, even if you can yes. get it to 200. Would like, be better. That would be much better. Because also high blood sugars impede 
wellness in general and healing. Absolutely. Yeah. The longer you leave high blood sugars while you're sick, the more likely you're going to be sick longer. Right. Yeah. Really. All right. Well, I appreciate you doing this with me because it just seems like something that people struggle with constantly. And it doesn't matter if you're newly diagnosed or if you've had diabetes for a while. Um, but I thought that it would fit into the bold beginning series. So it does. I think the only thing that I, I think because we have those levels of mild, moderate and large for mm -hmm. ketones, I think the last question a lot of people end up having is when do, when do I go into the emergency department? Yeah. Right. When should I go? I've done all this stuff. Things aren't moving. Things are getting worse. You know, if your ketone levels, I think one, you're trying to drive blood sugar down. It's not working. Let's say you've even, while you're sick, you've done a sight change because you think, well, besides being sick, maybe it's my pump, right? Your blood sugars aren't really moving. Your ketones aren't moving or are going up. That's more of a time you may be behind the curve in terms of hydration and other, um, the electrolyte balance and all of that in your body. You may need to go to the emergency department. Mm -hmm. You may need their assistance. Yeah. Um, so I think just to clear up, like, wh when should you really go? <laughs> well, well, Jenny, to be completely candid, this is a hard episode to do because there's a lot of nuance and everyone listening is not going to be in the same situation. Right. And and really, honestly, I mean, there'll be a disclaimer at the beginning that says, like, this is not medical advice because I don't know your situation and you might need right. to go to the hospital. And, like, bringing up those Facebook posts where people run in and, like, go to the hospital. Those are people who are like, I don't know what's happening there. And it sounds like you don't know either. So – Right. Go find somebody go, who understands this. Go go yeah. somewhere who at, who has a medical degree and can at least maybe hook you up to an IV. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the way I think about it is the way I described it when Arden had the, the bent cannula, right? Which, by mm -hmm. the way, I just want to say, only bent cannula the entire time she's had diabetes. Just one, which I think is wow. not bad, right? Um, no. But in my mind, when I saw that, I thought, if I can start bringing this down right away, if she can hold water... And I'm moving quickly at a reduction. Okay. But I am not going to mess around with this. Like, so, right. you know, I, you have to use your own personal intuition and, you know, it's don't Jenny and I aren't telling you what to do, but you know, I just thought maybe this would help guide people through it a little bit. It is a really weird thing. Like you, I seriously, in, in this space, sometimes you'll think, why does no one ever talk about this or that? And the answer is because I don't know. Like, I don't want to tell you absolutely something and it not be right. And I'll I'll give you an example. What's an episode that we have on our list that we never get to? How low of a blood sugar causes damage to a person? Everyone wants an episode about that. And they bug me constantly. I get notes about it. I say to Jenny, how do we do this? And we're both like, I, I don't know. Like, like. Right. Yeah. You that's, can, a difficult, that's a difficult one because it's kind of like, it's like ketones. It's, you've been given these tools, you've been given this guideline to utilize and every person, I mean, what is it? It's your diabetes may vary, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it may. Right. Yeah. And, and and by the way, some people are dizzy at 70 and some people are dizzy at 50 and some people never get dizzy and et cetera. And, right. but the question people have over and over again is when does damage happen? Like, mm -hmm. where can I let, and, and listen, I can tell you that last night, Arden's blood sugar dipped down to 55 for a couple minutes. It went up to 61. I looked at it. I was like, if this keeps rising, I'm okay. But it went back down again. So I gave her some juice. I, I didn't want her to sit there. Do right. I think that she's three IQ points dumber today because of that? No. No. But, you know, but I also am not comfortable saying that out loud, like as a certainty, you know? Correct. And Reese, I mean, references or research often focus a lot heavier on what are what are the problems that come from high blood sugars mm -hmm. there's minimal there is information but there's minimal information about what value creates problems with long term like mental health yeah. right and most of the research identifies under 55 um so if you're looking for a, a value i would even say let's say under 60, just to be safe, right? right? Um, but honestly, it's it's the duration of the low blood sugar. And that's a general 
that's a general statement, yeah. right? If you're having duration one day into the next, into the next, into the next, it's very likely that you're impacting right. your brain cells. Yeah, but if your right? blood sugar is 60 for a half an hour, it's a different it, situation. It's a different situation. I think that's the that's the best, simplest way to say too much is too much mm -hmm. and will likely create issues. So let's aim for less lows and defining lows as under 60. Let's aim for less of those. Um, well, so. one, one day, maybe we'll try to tackle it and see how it goes. But I, I just wanted to make the point that this is not this ketones thing. It's There's no real certainty in it. Like, I don't know when to tell you to go to the hospital. So right. good luck. Um, and try not to get sick. I'll tell you right now, Jenny, um, I don't miss COVID. But I miss everybody staying away from me and nobody getting sick. I love that time. <laughs> Everybody's been so sick here for so long. I would go back to being locked down not to feel like this. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, hopefully you guys are all on the mend. Thank so. you. I hope so, too. Yeah. All right. I'll, uh, okay. I really appreciate it. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Yeah. Of course. First, I want to thank my sponsors. InPen from Medtronic Diabetes and remind you to go to InPenToday.com. I also want to thank US Med, USMed.com forward slash juice box or call 888-721-1514. And of course, Touched by Type 1 is at touchedbytype1.org. They also have a bustling Facebook and Instagram presence. Go find them. If you are looking for more Bold Beginnings episodes, head to juiceboxpodcast.com, go up to the top to the menu, and it says it right there, Bold Beginnings. Actually, a lot of the series are up there. Ask Scott and Jenny, After Dark, Algorithm Pumping, Defining Diabetes, Diabetes Pro Tip, The Variable Series, uh, Mental Wellness, Defining Thyroid, it's all there, where you can just search your podcast app. If you just said Juice Box, one word, and then like Bold Beginnings, I think you would get a list of all of the episodes right in your podcast player. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Let me remind you that Jenny works at integrateddiabetes.com. If you want to hire her, head over there. And I appreciate you listening and sharing the show. As the year comes to an end, I find myself very um, reminiscent of the past year. I think back. That's not the word reminiscent. What am I? Hmm, don't remember the word. I'm feeling good. So another long year of making the podcast for me. And I'm just thrilled with how it went. I'm thrilled with how you guys enjoy the show, your feedback, and how you share it. It grew exponentially this year, doubling downloads over last year. Maybe more than doubling downloads over last year. What do you think? Yes, more than doubling the downloads from last year. It's just taking off because you guys are great listeners who not only download and subscribe and follow, but you tell other people about the show. And that's why it's growing. And that's why we get content like this. And I just can't thank you enough. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast. <laughs>